beautiful patrons and welcome back federal jurisdiction versus state jurisdiction on a state jurisdiction it's much easier to obtain oath of office on a federal jurisdiction it is a great puzzle a great puzzle that as far as I'm aware of many people have yet to come to its solution but here is the solution for you how do you get the oath of office of federal judges in most states you go to the Secretary of State on a federal level Department of State which is the equivalent of Secretary of State on the independent state levels don't hold these instruments but there are agencies that hold it but you will look till kingdom come and you will not find these entities unless you just decided you know what let me just send this request and mass to the hundreds and hundreds of federal agencies that exist and hopefully one of them respond favorably you don't have to do all that I'll tell you exactly where and how they're called appointment of affidavits let you know the district judge the date of appointment tells you the name of the court tells you the name of the district and it tells you the name of the employee in this case this is the chief judge who oversees all the activities of the inferior judges if anyone is to held liable you have to exhaust your remedy through them oath of office I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the state to the same and they're binding themselves to the Constitution which includes that section that preserves your private right of action as a private man called the Bill of Rights within the same Constitution and they are saying and declaring and taking an oath that they will bear true faith and allegiance to it aka you that I take this obligation freely meaning they've done it voluntarily and that they are obligated to it without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office in which I am about to enter so help me God that's the part that lets you know that this is their oath of office obviously and another important part that lets you know that this is all commerce believe it or not this appointment affidavit is their oath and bond for two main reasons the first reason is item number C affidavit as to the purchase and sale of office wait sale of office so you telling me the sale the office itself is a position that can be sold when you speak of sale you're speaking of commercial transaction it is right in your face it says I have not nor has anyone acting on my behalf given transferred promised or paid any consideration for or in expectation or hope hope of receiving assistance in securing this appointment oh wait so you can tell so you telling me this is a security you telling me you can securitize this instrument itself you telling me that this oath of office has monetary value to it just like you can appoint and assign contracts in real estate and on stock markets you can do the same with this how do you know and by the way they sign it they date it this is the chief judge and you often hear me you often hear me talk about acting judge acting judge because that is their true title it's an act and they show it to you on their oath of office never refer to them as judge or chief judge they are always active because it's a capacity that can strip from them or cloak them with if anything expires it's a commercial transaction and if it's not stipulated on its face that means it's perpetual how do you know that it is a bond besides the fact that it shows you that it can be securitized and transferred as commercial instrument let me zoom this in a little bit more see this standard form 61 
U.S. Office of Personnel Management. The chapter, chapter 296, like you have chapters of organizations, the chapter is a geographical location or section or subsidiary where you'll be making the bond claim and sending your bond claim to. So look up the address that corresponds with chapter 296 of U.S. Office of Personnel Management. Who are the ones that manages? Who are the ones that manages their personnel, aka the judge taking the oath of office? Standard form is one of the forms that's issued by the Office of Personnel Management (OPM) that works hand in hand with the General Service Administration. One of the General Service there are two main types of formats of forms with the General Service Administration and the OPM. There are start, standard forms and optional forms, like options with trading, and standard as in fixed amounts. How else do you know this is their bond? See this NSN? We'll go over it later. See this GPO, the year, and the numbers in front of it? We will go over it later. But let's stick to this fact that this is a standard form and see the fact that it shows prior edition usable it's telling you that this is a commercial instrument just as you will see the same verbiage in all other GSA standard forms this is the website of office of professional management dot gov the request pertaining to chief judge so-and-so and judge so-and-so which I have omitted please be advised that a search has been conducted in the office of legal policy and two pages have been located meaning they hold these bonds and oaths and contain records responsive to your request. I have determined that this material is appropriate for release without excision and copies are enclosed. Now the clerks, apparently the clerks, a different entity holds the clerk's information and they tell it to you. Regarding the portion of your request pertaining to magistrate judge and clerk court, meaning the magistrate judge and the clerk are who we're talking about now. Please be advised that while OLP, Office of Legal Policy, under the U.S. Department of Justice, bond for acting judges and chief judges. Now you see why you never want magistrate judges to be. The complete video's been posted on the Patreon page. Take care. Best of luck.